weekend's World Cup final. But within the last hour, we've heard there will be some local interest in the match. Donovan's here to tell us more. Donny. Yes, the appointment of Howard Webb as referee means that Norfolk assistant referee Darren Can will be officiating in Sunday's final. What a year it's been for yeah. him as well. Fantastic. Took charge in the Champions League final in Madrid in May. His performances with Howard Webb have caught the eye in South Africa particularly the game between Italy and Slovakia. Two big decisions. Darren making the right call in both to deny Italy two goals. Great news. And I hope he uh, does the same in the final as Fingers well. Fingers crossed. He's been faultless so far, hasn't he? Absolutely. Thanks for that, Donny. Now, when train enthusiast John Jolly heard he'd made it into this month's edition of the <laughs> Railway magazine, he was pretty chuffed. But he wasn't quite so happy when he's got his hands on an actual copy and discovered that the article in question was his own obituary. Jim Rice has more. Meet John Jolly. Jolly by name, Jolly by nature, and Jolly well still alive, thank you very much. For 20 years, John's run the Mangaps Railway Museum in Burnham on Crouch with barely a hitch. But earlier this week, he was stopped in his tracks by an article in the Railway magazine. The founder of one of Britain's quaintest heritage lines, the Mangaps Farm Railway in Essex, has died at the age of 79. John Jolly lived up to his name in a massive and quotable railway fan and worked at Harmony's Burnham for his school. It's strange, in the early days when I'd only heard about it and even had it um, dictated to me over the phone, it didn't seem too bad, but to actually see it there in black and white uh, in an official magazine in context, that's a very odd feeling, believe me. News that John had hit the buffers came as a surprise to wife June too. The, the uh, railway business has sprung all sorts of surprises on me, but I think this is the biggest one <laughs> to date. <laughs> Not quite ready for the big departure board in the sky, John phoned the magazine to let off a bit of steam. It turns out a railway enthusiast from Essex had heard about the death of a local farmer, also called John Jolly, and jumped to the wrong conclusion. One does uh, feel that... Um one's identity is really based on what other people think of you. It just brings this home to you. And when you sort of suddenly think that, well, a lot of other people think I'm dead and you're not quite sure who, then walking down the street becomes quite an, an uncomfortable situation. The magazine's printing an apology next month, stressing that Mangaps is very much open for business. And unlike his locomotives, John's not quite ready to become a museum piece just yet. Jim Rice, Anglia News, Burnham on Crouch in Essex. Remind me, who said reports of my death are greatly exaggerated? Who was it? It was the author Mark Twain, wasn't it? Mark Twain. So you don't even realise when you're telling jokes. that Twain, true. Oh, it's all yeah, in there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very funny. Right, uh, you've all may seen all the news here in the East. Coming up in a few minutes, the national picture for you. Now, we've had a few sprinkles of rain over the past couple of days, but not enough to compensate for the very dry conditions across the Anglia region. And with the hot weather set to return, we've sent Amanda out into the countryside. Amanda, we're never happy, are we? Either too hot, too cold, not enough water or too much. What's it to be? I know, we're never happy, are we? But I've actually been out to the Environment Agency to see what type of work they do. Now, they look after the water resources in our region for both flood and drought. Now, I'm here at the River Grey Ooze in, sorry, in Ely at Cambridgeshire. Now, if I just show you the river here, it may not look it, but it's actually lower than what it should be now, like many parts of our region. And you can see the banks over there still looking parched. Now, we may not have seen much in the, much in the way of rainfall this year, but do you remember last year? Well, we had this was last June at Hingham in Norfolk. Torrential thunderstorms, hail covering the ground, and lightning damage across the region. And 2009 made it six wet summers in a row. Now, during the past few years, there have been many problems with floodings to deal with. So I decided to go. So I decided to go to the Environment Agency to see what type of work they do. It's an imposing landmark on the River Neen in the Fens, the Dog in a Doublet Sluice and Lock near Whittlesea. This is the largest lock on the River Neen, which was built in the 1930s. Now, this river here used to be tidal all the way up to Peterborough, and places east of the cathedral would often flood. Flood forecaster Steve Taylor had taken me to see the sluice to explain how it helps the Environment Agency to control the flow of the river. We allow the local decisions to be made to operate these effectively, to either uh, release more seawater in or more fresh water out, to make sure that we reduce the risk of flooding to people that live in the local area. But it's not just about too much water. Currently, the region has the opposite problem, the driest four-month spell for 14 years. So now it's about managing a scarce water resource. 
it's really the low flows that um, is important because in the summer we will need to make sure that we're protecting the environment and making sure that people can abstract as much water as they can uh, with regard to that constraint of protecting the environment. So really we, we, you know, we're balancing, if you like, the, those two needs. Back at the Environment Agency's regional headquarters in Peterborough, staff can remotely monitor water levels at the sluice and many other locations across our region so that they know when flooding might be a problem. If you have a, a major event at the start of the winter, if it stays relatively wet, then the same people could get flooded a number of times through the year. The agency uses a range of information to decide when a flood warning is needed. We'd be looking at the weather radar information, the same as you'd see on the daily weather forecast. We'd use that information to work out how much water is coming to the rivers. We'd use that to work out when to issue warnings to make sure that people at risk of flooding get an early warning and take the right actions to reduce the impact of flooding. So, from the front line of flood defence to the hub where they gather their information, the Environment Agency is keeping a watch on our region and telling me when it's time to warn you about the danger of flooding. Well, Amanda, I imagine there isn't any chance of flooding at the moment. What about chance of rain? Well, certainly not over the weekend. It is looking very dry across the region. However, we are, are hopeful that maybe some rain could just creep into the region on Monday, but I'll give you more details of that in just a moment. And what about that hot weather returning? Well, this is a bit of a problem. In fact, the Met Office have just issued a weather warning. We are expecting a heat wave over this weekend. In fact, temperatures in some places could reach 31 or 32 degrees. So although some of you do like the heat, others do find it very uncomfortable. So you will need to take care if you're out and about in that sunshine. Right, let's take a look at the rest of the details. I know the gardens don't like it, but I'm loving this You hot do, weather. you're absolutely yeah, loving this, aren't you? Yeah, great. Right, now earlier in the programme we asked for your thoughts on whether you think the smoking ban should be lifted. We've had a huge response, we and we have. here is just a few of them. Let's try and get through as many as we can. Jerry Goff from uh, Siderston in Norfolk says he's in favour of the ban, but thinks that pubs should be an exception. He thinks a separate smoking area should be designated within licensed premises to help sustain the long-term future of our local pubs. Yeah, and I've got Joanna Jordan from Essex here. She says the smoking ban has nothing but has been nothing but beneficial to her. She's worked in bars and restaurants since she was 18 and says being able to come home every night and not stink of cigarettes is an absolute luxury. Good point there. Here's another one from Heather McKay from Colchester says she's allergic to cigarette smoke and the ban has been a long way to joy for her and her family as well. She thinks the ban should be extended, in fact, to include bus shelters and also open park spaces. And Rosemary Hewlett got in touch to say she thinks the ban is good, but that's, that it's led to more people smoking in the street. She says there should be some designated places where smoking is allowed that's, you know, like smoke rooms in pubs. OK, let's finish off with Mary Hill, and who thinks that smokers are being persecuted, and she wants to see a separate smoking room set up in establishment so that these smokers don't have to stand outside. Well, as I say, thank you very much indeed for all of those. I'm sorry we couldn't get to any more of yeah, them. But that is it for us for tonight. Hope you've enjoyed the programme. We're back again tomorrow night. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye.